<coughs> hey guys welcome back to another video and today would we'll be starting a new topic which is operating systems or also known as OS so we know we everyday use OS's right so Windows 7 10 uh, Mac and so every device that smart devices that we use like our computers or our mobile phones they all have some sort of OS or operating system and these OS's differ from different devices, different manufacturers. Uh, some of the examples are Windows, uh, Mac OS, iPad OS, which I'm on, uh, Android. So all of them are OS's and they're mainly responsible for running your whole system and making the proper use of your hardware. Anyway, so I have pulled up my notes here and we'd be going through each topic and as usual the notes would be given in the link below and let's get started so the first thing that we'll be covering is processes so <clears throat> as it's said here to run a process or a software it goes through some steps so whenever um, you're starting a process let's say sorry about that so let's say you're starting Google Chrome so in Google Chrome so the moment you click on the button of on of the logo of Google Chrome some processes take place right so we are going to basically talk about these processes and what steps they go through so the first one so this is basically the life cycle of a process and the first one is new so new represents to uh, let's say as I said before so you want to run Google Chrome so the whole software is within your computer's hard disk right and we all know that hard disks are very slow think of it as less memory equals to more speed so what do I mean by that let's say so we have our hard disk and nowadays we have another type of hard disk which is called solid state drive uh, which is much faster than any hard disk ever then we have opt-in drives so these are kind of an SSD but but much faster then we have our RAM random access memory then we have our cache memory so the speed they go up as we go down so these are far less expensive than a RAM let's say so a 16 GB RAM let's say costs you like $30 and one terabyte of hard disk would cost you $30 so the prices are lower in this case like as you go up but as you go down the speed increases so there's a catch always there anyway so as I was saying so the software your Google Chrome so as I was saying so Google Chrome it's in your hard disk right and as I said hard disks are pretty slow and Google Chrome as we all know the memes that Google Chrome needs a lot of resources a lot so to run Google Chrome we need to put Google Chrome in a faster memory so in the new phase to run any software we have to bring it to the RAM from the hard disk if this process is in the hard disk so Chrome is in your hard disk and we have to bring the software within your RAM because RAM is faster and we can work better so ready state is basically the software is ready to run giving it it's giving the program its meaning it the program is within its RAM so new it's in your hard disk RAM uh, it's in your hard disk ready means that the process is in your RAM and it's ready to go running well it's self-explanatory I guess so uh, running is basically the software is actually working waiting occurs when there is an IO exception like uh, when an IO event occurs basically so the you there is a prompt for the user to give an input 
uh, stuff like that so the program is still within uh, the memory however uh, it's waiting for the user's response to give any give any input and interrupt so interrupt is basically uh, the program gets stopped it gets kicked out of the RAM or the memory random access memory and the other program that interrupted the whole process takes in so let's say you are mm, playing a game and in that game you accidentally press uh, the Windows button and what happens there is that the process the whole game minimizes and the windows tab opens up and shows you what you want to do tells you what you want to do or asks you what you want to do so this is that this is an io event occurrence when the user uh, let's say a random something popped out that is much higher priority than the user what is what he is doing right now so then in that case there's an interruption and the processor or your OS has to do the task that is that has highest priority and terminate is basically you're terminating the whole process and one of the biggest things or one of the biggest constraints that we have here is that the RAM that we use is expensive it's not a lot in size uh, if you have a really really high-end uh, PC or a workstation the highest I guess you can go is 128 GB of system memory so still that's really expensive and that's one of the concerns that we cannot put all these softwares within the memory so all of them would always be ready to go rather than like going through all this process it takes from the hard disk to the RAM and blah 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 blah, blah. so that's one of the biggest problems and what OS does is nowadays OSs are like very sophisticated and uh, they follow a very good process scheduling patterns so different OSs they do it in different processes uh, we have round robin where each process gets like a limited amount of time then another process goes on and we'll be going through all of this in other videos later on so another two term that we need to know is suspend weight so suspend weight uh, so rather than going to the definition I'll be going through an example so let's say you are in Microsoft Word and you typed in your documents and you are going to print the whole thing right so your computer it knows how much time it would need to let's say print two pages so rather than uh, putting a uh, Microsoft Word in or the printing process within the memory it can just suspend it for the time being as it knows how much time it would need to actually come do all the printing completely and come back so it would until that moment so it's let's say three seconds or much more let's say three seconds so for three seconds it would uh, give the resources to other processes that are actually in the queue and wanting your processor and suspend ready is basically as I said so different uh, programs are ready ready in the ready state however they need resources and you are using your resources so the OS puts them in a queue or uh, a list whatever and when there are enough resources for the current program to run uh, or the program in the queue to run it will give that resources until that it would be in suspend ready state so it is ready however it's suspended due to lack of resources okay so now we're going to talk about PCB so PCB is basically uh, stands for process control block <coughs> and uh, as the definition says how the data of the process is maintained when a process is getting out of the ready state all the data has to be saved so think of it as you are playing a game 
and in that game so nowadays people play open world games a lot and in open world games you do a lot of stuff going here and there and like robbing banks and whatnot so <coughs> in that when you are like let's say you have played for two hours now you want to stop and you just quit so what PCB does it stores all that data the last moment the the moment that you quit all the data gets stored in the PCB or the process control block and it's saved there so every process remember this that every process has a PCB everyone Chrome has one your Apex Legends has one your Word has one every process has one and it stores the information so that when you start the process again another time it can uh, work from the previous state so if you want a very good example that would be let's say you open 12 tabs in chrome and you just rather than cutting all the tabs you just cut the whole program so when you what happens here is that chrome sees that there are different tabs open but the user didn't close every one of them or the uh the last uh, like didn't close 11 tabs and kept one Anyway, so didn't close all of the tabs and <clears throat> when you open Chrome again from uh, your desktop or whatever, it will prompt you that do you want to restore all the previous tabs that you were working on? So, But this is the best example of PCP is that it uh, Chrome saved all the tabs, all the information that you were working on in the PCB. And when you started the program again, it took all that data that it stored in your, uh, let's say, in your hard disk and collected all the data and started from that point on. And this happens in games too. And now we're going to talk about, oh, one more thing that you need to know that PCB stores the state of the process. So what state the process is in is it in a ready state or suspend ready waiting or whatnot okay so switching we have to understand switching switching is very easy and uh, as I said before so you want to switch between two programs so p0 and p1 let's say this is um, your chrome and this is let's say your word and you're done you're working with chrome and then you like cut chrome it will save it in pcb0 or pcp of chrome reload pcp of one in word let's say you uh, randomly cut word or the power went down or whatever uh, it would reload from the last worksheet that you were working on then you can save that and reload pcb0 again and would show all the tabs that you were working on before uh, now we need to understand long-term scheduler, scheduler, whatever you say, and short-term scheduler. So long-term is basically, as I said, that all the programs, they are in your hard disk, and we need to load these programs into your RAM or random access memory. So how do we do that? So this whole process is done using the long term scheduler. So long term meaning that the process would stay a long term within the RAM. So if you're working for a long time, so it would stay a long time within the RAM. That's why it's a long term scheduler. So it goes from hard disk to RAM and a short term scheduler is basically uh, gives the process the resources it needs. So it determines which process should get the processor at that moment. So you have a lot of stuff open in your RAM. Let's say these four or pro five programs. However, not all of them are using your resources, right? I say this one is using your resources. Now what STS does is it looks that what the user wants let's say you want to work with this program right now so it rather than giving the resources to him it redirects the resources to this guy that 
based on the user priority. This is done using STS. And the final thing that we'd be talking about is IPC or inter-process communication. So IPC is basically is communicating between two processes and the two things that we need to know is message passing and shared memory. So message passing is basically let's say you have a folder within your D drive and you create a shortcut of that folder in your desktop. So this is let's say the shortcut right and this is named onic and this is also named onic but this is a shortcut right now what masses passing does is let's say you change the name of the main folder that's in your d drive to let's say no i don't want onic anymore i want it to be cool so what it does it sends a message to the OS so OS checks if uh, this name is permissible or not it doesn't have any dots commas or any characters that are not shouldn't be there and if it's all okay it changes the name to cool and changes the name of the shortcut also to cool so this is message passing so you pass on the message to the OS OS checks it OS then passes the message back making the folder name cool and making the shortcut name also cool and what shared memory is is it's the best example is clipboard so when you're copying something from let's say chrome you copied the word chrome and you want to paste it in your word document you just control uh, v and put paste the word chrome there so both of these softwares or these processes are sharing the clipboard so this is uh, how message is passed between processes and that's all for today and i'll be uploading more videos on uh, operating systems sooner and thank you for watching. Hope you guys like the content. And if you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to comment down below. Thank you.